Welcome back. In this video, I'll be going over a projectile emulation system that I made for the PVE revamp uh, project that I showcased in a previous video. Uh, I can't really have the player using actual arrows at all uh, because of the entities I'm using for left click detection. So I just made my own uh, projectile system. As you can see, I can just sort of shoot arrows. I can summon an entity and shoot at them. The, the, whoops, the, the knockback is ca just calculated based on the motion of the arrow. Uh, I'm not going to really get into that many functions. Um, this is actually pretty accurate to actual vanilla uh, arrows. It actually, it, like, you can shoot uh, just above, like, a husk and it'll go past them because it won't actually hit the hitbox. Um... So that's just something that happens because Minecraft's hitboxes are wonky. Um, and you can sort of see the arc that I'm doing. Let me actually lower the gravity because that is something I can do. We'll bring it down by about a factor of three. And as you can see, there's a pretty solid arc there that happens. Uh, what I actually do is whenever an arrow is summoned or whenever an arrow, uh, or whenever the arrow I want to emulate, I take its rotation and its... Uh, motion, and I split the motion into two vectors. I have the, the horizontal vector, which I get uh, by taking the X and Z motion, squaring them, and adding them, and getting the square root of that, and that gives me my horizontal vector, and then I have my vertical vector, which is just the Y motion directly. And with those two, I then calculate what the, the angle of the arrow should be, uh, the X angle, I think. I never know because Minecraft's angles are weird. Uh, or weirdly named. I think it's the X angle. I calculate the X angle based on the ratio of those. And then I move them forward um, by adding the two vectors. Uh, the total of the two vectors. I then move it that many units forward. So let's say I have uh, 10... Uh, vertical speed and 20 horizontal speed my angle would be 30 degrees and my motion would be 30 units um, so I move it 30 units forward at 30 degrees uh, and I do that every tick and every tick I also add the gravitational factor which increases or decreases the vertical velocity based on uh, whether it's moving up or down so that's why it actually has a proper ballistic trajectory. I can also add air resistance, but currently that's not in place. Uh, but it is a configurable value I have on the sidebar. Um, now, hit detection is a little interesting. Um, I'm actually going to show some functions here for this, because uh, to explain this is a little complicated. Uh, every tick, I have a function that's run on every entity. If there's an arrow that I don't convert manually, it'll automatically convert the arrow. Uh, so if like a skeleton shoots an arrow, it'll convert the arrow into the system. So that means, uh, sorry about the crappy frame rate, but as you can see, I can even shoot like a, a dispenser, uh, low gravity arrows. Um, so it can automatically convert if an arrow right here, this is a score that's only on arrows. If that's detected, it'll move the movement function. But what we're actually gonna be looking at here is the hit to the hit check function, which execute is executes as all entities that have the hittable tag from the actual PVE rework main data pack set. Um, I run a hit check function here. Now I have a score a scoreboard uh, for all active arrows. This is just so I have an easy way to detect if a specific arrow exists. I just have a roster that I add and remove a score to uh, as those arrows are summoned and killed. Uh, and as you can see, I have a specific UUID here. So if the arrow's ID zero exists, I will then execute at that arrow, um, looking for the entity that is currently being checked by this. If it's within six blocks, it'll then, it'll then run the more intensive hit check function. This basically just makes it so I don't have to run the hit check function constantly. It only makes it, it only runs it if the entity is within logical hit distance for any arrow. Uh, and then I have the uh, arrow specific thing here. There's specific arrow functions so I can 
uh, run stuff here as um, uh, the specific arrow because I need to copy some scores off of the arrow, like the global timestamp, uh, which gets updated every time the arrow moves. As you can see right here, we have arrow move, which executes as any arrow. This updates a global timestamp. Uh, this is in place so I know what direction to do a hit check uh, raycast in because if an arrow was processed in the in, in a tick before this entity does its hit detection then the arrows already moved past that entity so I need to check behind it to see where the arrow was in that tick uh, and if that arrow has not yet been ticked if the global timestamp does not or if the timestamp on that arrow does not equal the global timestamp then I need to run the raycast facing forward because that's where the arrow is going to be uh, in this tick that's where it's going to be moving through uh, and then I have some hit detection stuff uh, I think or it's pretty much a copy of the code that I used in the main uh, PVE rework data pack so I'm not gonna be going over that I'm not really gonna be going over anything uh, other than what I have talked about here uh, so that's everything I wanted to cover more or less but yeah thanks for watching and I will catch y'all next time